It pains me to inform you that the age of chivalry is dead. It's also diseased and forsaken. This week on the channel, I'll be painting the largest model I can get my hands on and giving it away as a surprise to the channel's smallest member. That's right, Tiny, you're getting your damn chaos knife. In this video, we are going to be immersing ourselves in all things related to heretical knights. We are going to be painting up this bad boy in a step-by-step -step guide and also treating ourselves to some of the lore along the way. Let's dive straight in. This is the Chaos Knight Abominant Kit from Warhammer. And the first thing you will notice as we flip the box over is that the one box is used for a variety of different knight builds. So we could construct an Abominant, a Rampager, or a Desecrator. What this tells me though, is that we are going to have a whole bunch of leftover spare bits to keep. Sort them into a fancy little storage box like I do, and when you are custom building your next model, jump in here for inspiration. I did exactly that when I was making my very own Orc Mech custom model out of the Age of Sigma Warhammer Plus subscription model. There on his back is a piece of the gauntlet of a Chaos Knight acting as his custom force field. Good segue here as I announce early on that whilst this knight will be so much fun to customise, I know that Tiny plays in tournaments. My goal is to be vanilla with the model's pose and also its appearance. When playing competitively, some opponents may take issue if the knight's pose is lower, helping it to avoid line of sight detection, or it may be frustrating if they look at the knight and assume that a proxy weapon is one thing when actually it's another. These are points that are usually overcome very easily in games, but I'd feel terrible if it were my model that caused him any grief at an event. I tell you who would never make me feel terrible, and that is the amazing team over at Emperor. A huge thanks to them for sending me this model, and if you're living in Australia and you'd like to get your hands on Warhammer models at about 20% off regular retail price, check out their online store. I've been building my model following the instructions, but you'll notice that I'm keeping it in sub-assembly. This will save you so much time and heartache when painting a knight, and it all starts with planning. I research online for some ideas I'd like to include, and more importantly, I stalk Tiny on social media a little, and in the Discord chat, to see what some of the knights in his collection look like. I'm not going to match them 100%, even if I use the same paints just based on our different styles. But I'd like to keep some things consistent and add some others in to make this knight unique. Each knight here incorporates the bluey grey armour panels with some eggshell coloured panels as well, with no hard and fast rule on where they need to be. Excellent. And a whole bunch of gold trim as all knights should. I can work with all of this. And for the base that our knight will stand atop of, I'm still riding the high of now being a 3D printer owner, so I'm keen to put my printer through another litmus test. A community member suggested that I check out Mezguik Miniatures, and I'm so glad that I did. I'm not sponsored, but it would be rude not to point you in their direction. Lots of cool models, but today I'm hunting for a Wasteland Earth base. I've picked out this Badlands base digital file and round two for the Creality Hello Mage S. Same as last time, I transfer the file of the base onto USB and place this into the printer. I pour my resin in and I hit print. I walk away with the comfort of knowing that when I come back, there will be a cool new thematic Badlands base waiting for me. We're into the good stuff now, as we paint this, what I would best describe as a delivery system for hate. If you're here to kick back and hang out with me, okay, wow, thank you, I'll aim to keep you entertained, but if you're here to paint step by step with me or to learn a new technique, there's a couple of things I'll do to help you out. Down the bottom here will be chapters, so you can follow along to the parts that are relevant to you, and then up here in the top corner, I'll add the paints that I use for each step along the way. So I turn my mind to the knight again, priming with rattle cans for ease and different pieces are getting a different coloured prime. Anything that I want to have the eggshell or bone colour will have a lighter prime. My dark panels will start black and the bulky body parts of the knight can go direct to gunmetal. To celebrate two years on YouTube, I decided to treat myself to a new airbrush because I'm worth it. I'd like a couple of these armor panels to be split down the middle in color like Tiny has on his knights. 
so I tape off some sections that will remain bone coloured and help to protect them from some of the overspray. Now I mentioned that our colours won't be a 100% match and rather than that bluey grey colour similar to what we see on Space Wolves, I'm going to steer our knight into a little more black transitioning into blue and green. Having this much black allows me to have a dark knight. Perhaps he's wondering why you'd paint a model and then just give it away. It was Bane. I want to create a gradient from black through Incubi Darkness and into Sotek Green. And if you don't own an airbrush, all good. For these steps, you could wet blend, dry brush, stipple, or layer your chosen colors on. I'll holster the airbrush in a second and paint some other panels with my brushes. I've learned to show the satisfying moments of masking tape removal because I know you savages are like me and live for these moments. These bone colored armor panels are going to be a lot of fun. So if you normally avoid painting white, grab a spare piece left over from a vehicle and give it a shot with me. None of these steps are complicated. So if you ride shotgun with me, then you can build that skill today. Here's how the bone section will turn out at the end for your info. This way you can picture why we're applying each step. I'm creating a glaze with contrast fire slayer flesh, contrast medium and airbrush thinner. And by mixing these together, I'm just making a really weak paint. As I brush this on, check out how thin it is. Don't worry, this isn't a six hour guide to painting this model, but some steps like this that you might find helpful as another tool in your kit, I'll show them in the extra detail. Painting down the armor panel and lifting my brush so that the majority of the paint ends in the area that I want to be darkest. I allow the paint to dry and repeat this over several layers, covering less and less each time. Transfers. If you enjoy freehand painting, then go for it. But I'm sorry, Tiny, I'm not that confident in this area just yet and I don't want to ruin your model. So I pick out some decals that match your other nights and it just wouldn't be one of my videos without a segment of me struggling to apply them. I'm putting them on early in the process so that I can add some extra steps over the top to help them look like part of the armor and not just a sticker over the top. Continuing your glaze layers or some sponge chipping across them with the base layer color is a simple way to achieve this. The machine is an unholy relic of humanity's ancient past the brightest minds that mankind had to offer. Not just the brightest, but also the most determined, the most loyal. So cast your mind to what events must have transpired to lure this one to the forces of chaos. The suits themselves are engineered using standard template constructs, STCs. You'll hear that acronym used throughout Warhammer narrative and picture these as a database of blueprints. Having the STC for a class of knight combined with the appropriate materials would allow for its construction. However, pouring water, flour and yeast into the machine is how bread noughts are made. The pilot is neuro connected to the suit. They are bonded and as such, the chaos taint is absorbed and corrupts the knight as though spreading through a nervous system. Thinning down browns and oranges is a nice and effective way of creating streaking grime on the panels. If the armor is chipped and rusting, and this is an environment where it is rained, this is creating streaking down the panels. There is so much armor trim on these models because, well, they're very knightly. My advice here is to settle in, take your time, and have your favorite music or a movie on in the background. Right as the panels are nearing completion, a new gadget arrives in the mail, and I'm eager to see if it will help the channel in showing you guys and girls what's happening on the model. This is the idea cam from BenQ, and it looks just like a normal webcam, but I'm hoping that it can do something extra for us. I haven't streamed in about a year, and there's been some more requests for me to get back into the game. One of the hurdles I had was being able to show you up close what I was painting. So with the idea cam, I can unclip it easily and bring you down to the model itself, which looks cool, but now I can take it one step further. 
I can attach the 15 times magnification viewer and get a load of this. Whilst on stream, I can bring you right in and show you exactly what I'm doing in high resolution. I love being able to stream with you because it's our opportunity to hang out and interact live, but I felt bad that you couldn't always get a close up view of what's going on. What do you think? Should we give it another go with the extra camera? I've been playing around with it today and I'm obviously enjoying myself. I'll add a link for it in the description below so that if it's something that might help you in the hobby, that you can check it out. And thank you to the team at BangQ for sending it across. Have you seen those sweet looking box art images of armor panels where there is that blue patina effect across a whole large section? I wanna take a run at that next and see if it's achievable for us mere mortals. Over the top of the Balthazar Gold base coat is a mix of Fire Slayer Flesh, Contrast Medium, and a few drops of Flow Improver. This helps avoid those streaks that we get from washes, but does increase the drying time. On a big night like this with so many panels to work through, that won't be a problem. Whilst it dries, I can paint up another section and come back. Here I'm applying it across the whole metallic frame of the night. Focus, Mike, focus. We're doing a patina panel or something, come back. Starting with a thin down mix of Sons of Horus Green. Now, I've painted patina effects in some of my other videos and each time I use different shades of blue and sea greens. And what I've discovered is that it doesn't really matter what your exact shade is. They all look really cool. You'll just need a few different blues to make it work. Quick tip, we've already mixed the paint and we'll have some left over. So let's add it onto our other gold sections as we go. Back for a second coat, and this time I'm allowing myself to get a little angrier with it. I'm deliberately applying it thick in some areas, and here's how this stage is looking. The lighter sea green I have is Gauss Blaster Green. The prominent locations for this will be in the thin recess lines, like here down the bottom, and then I'll stipple it with my brush in a few random sections of the panel. There's always a free color to be obtained when you mush the pair together on your palette. I'm applying this combination from the outside and in towards the center. You'll see here that I'm starting to get some ugly paintbrush strokes across the model. So to get rid of these, I simply wet the tip of my brush and I go back in and I'm breaking up those brush stroke lines. That's looking cool. The more variety in colors, the more weathered and realistic I think it will look. So I've grabbed a bright blue contrast paint, thin this a little, and I'm brushing this on in a few more spots. And then my darkest is Lupercal Green. By now, colors are colliding on my palette, and that's fine. We aren't painting a Codex compliant piece of power armor here. This should reflect the non-uniform environment that the knight operates in. And that's how it's looking. You can bounce back and forth between colors until you find a look that you're happy with, but I think that's looking sweet. It gives us a unique panel on our night, but the colors still match the theme that we're chasing. Corporate Mike here, and I got here as fast as I could, all the way down from head office. Seems to be some sort of misunderstanding with this report because it says that we're painting and giving away models for free now. <laughs> I'm here to keep a close eye on proceedings and shut this whole thing down if it doesn't align with corporate's values. Now I mentioned that I'm giving away... Generic VPN sponsor? I mentioned that I'm giving away this night to Tiny, and let me tell you why I find that so hilarious. See, over in our channel Discord, there's now over 100 of us, which is not only free to join, but I'd also love you to come check it out. In there, we have the painting competitions where winners are drawn at random, which levels out the playing field. The prize is that you can pick a model and I will buy it, paint it, and post it to you. From day one, Tiny has terrified me that in the event of winning, he would select a Chaos Titan. Now this bold statement gained traction, it gained support, and somewhat of a cult following in the Discord community. If I don't get ahead of this thing, I could be looking at a mutiny, which is why today I'm going to be surprising my New Zealand friend Tiny with his very own Chaos Knight. 
Sounds like some serious corporate spin going on here. I'm in, you magnificent son of a... This Chaos Knight needs to be even more battered and weathered for my liking. Remember, we've applied our wash across the metallic frame, but let's keep it going. I paint rust in several different ways. Finned paints, weathering powders, and I'll also use specific purpose-built products like this, Dirty Down Rust. I give the bottle a good shake and pour a selection into a plastic shot glass, which in review is a terrible idea. I've warmed this in hot water and now I'm picking out some sections of the chassis and applying it. I look for areas that I think water will pull, but I also just look for areas that need to have something going on because they're looking a little bland. To make the rust pop out even more, I thin down an orange paint and I add small amounts of this into the same areas to work in tandem with the rust paint. Typhus Corrosion is a fun technical paint that you should try out. It's full of grit and will destroy your brushes, so swap it out for an older brush and then apply it thick into an area like this chain blade that I want to be heavily worn and full of grim dark misery. I've just realised that we are on the home stretch and this makes me so happy. There are some really dark areas on the model and I want to contrast this a little more with some bright edges on the metallics. I pick out a bright gold and a bright silver and I'm working my way around each piece and any areas that are raised and will be prominently viewed or well, they can have the treatment to help them stand out. I start gluing the model together and I discover that I've forgotten to paint the loincloth robe, this thing hanging between his legs. I test fit the piece and remove it and repeat it over and over as I try and decide if he needs it. Don't be lazy, Mike. It will look cooler with it hanging there. Do it. I don't want to introduce a new accent colour now, so it needs to be either blue or bone coloured. I think bone will look more fun with staining on it, so I'm wet blending some initial colours and then glazing a transition down the cloak to make the area closer to the ground that bit darker. Sponging some Imperial Blood Staining, and if you want it to look older, Add some dark brown in, and if you want it to look fresh from the veins of the Emperor's Finest, go with a brighter red and add a drop of gloss finish in there. Ooh, brutal. I still prefer using Vallejo Whites as I find they last longer and they go on smoother. Now this has been a big video for me to make for the channel and I didn't think that a two or three part video series of Making the Night would land with the same impact so I hope you appreciate the effort that has gone into this big kahuna. Before we see how this model has turned out I would like to thank all of these amazing patrons. To give you an idea of how awesome they are I'm sure if Tiny was further corrupted by the forces of chaos then they would each heed my call and travel the expanse of the universe to come protect me. Sound familiar? Well the difference in this story is I would happily use each of you as meat shields so I could affect my escape. If you'd like to join the loyal ranks of these people that mean the absolute world to me then I'll add a link below to our channel Patreon in the video description but now, now it's time to check out this delivery system of hate which is the mighty Chaos Knight Rampage. Tiny, you are an absolute superstar for the life that you give to the Discord community and for all the support that you give to my channel. Thank you so much. 
when the night does arrive and you roll it out at competitive tournaments, I'd love for you to take some photos of it in action in the beautiful part of the world that you call home. To everyone else, I hope you enjoyed the ride and that you got something out of this journey. And if you like some of the techniques and want to come back to it, you can always save this video away in one of your painting playlists. And if you've made it this far into the video, I must be doing something right. So I'd love for you to consider hitting that like button because that tells YouTube that they should recommend this video to other people within our hobby that haven't yet discovered the channel and it's a channel that you help create. So thank you so much and until next time, I'll see you there. See the NASDAQ is up. Corporate mic, <laughs> gotta look in the lens. This is where I look up from reading the paper. Jesus, that's grim. That one was about a murder, let's move on. That's better, people at a party. It's on the back. That's an ad, that's fine. Not getting paid though, blur it out. I have my feet up? They're runners, probably not. Corporate Mike here, and I got here as fast as I could all the way down from a head office. <laughs> <laughs> Love me a cryptic crossword. <laughs> Garfield hating Mondays. I love Mondays. <laughs> I love Mondays is now my catchphrase. That might be it. That's so dumb. Ah. Corporate bike.